by foreign policy analyst and professor of politics at the University of South Florida, Moisin Milani. Um, let me talk about his legacy. Why don't we start there? How important was he for the reform movement, do you think? Uh, I think uh, Ayatollah Rafsanjani was a uh, truly a giant in the Islamic Republic of Iran. He was a giant in the Iranian Revolution as well as in the system that was established after the revolution. His greatest legacy is, in my mind, is that oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes he tried to pursue a moderate and pragmatic uh, course. Uh, usually revolutions, like even the Chinese Revolution, generate extremism. But Rafsanjani was a voice of reason and a voice for moderation. And secondly, perhaps even as important as the first legacy, is that no one within the governing elites in Iran tried harder and longer than Hashemi Rafsanjani to open up the West, to, to open up Iran to the West, and to reintegrate Iran into the world economy. These are huge achievements. He did not uh, completely achieve his goal, but I think he tried his best and left a powerful legacy. Well, you heard Jessica talking about uh, what this perhaps might mean for the election, Rouhani, also the relationship with these world powers, uh, especially when you see the United States with Donald Trump taking a, a much different tone in, in how he sees Iran. How does all of that change with his death, do you think, or does it? Well, I think it makes uh, not a huge difference in terms of Iranian foreign policy because Iranian foreign and security policies are not, was, uh, were not made by Ayatollah Rafsanjani. He was one of the uh, main decision makers, but was not the decisive decision maker. The ultimate decision maker in, uh, for Iranian security and foreign policies are the supreme leader. And as you know, there is no change there. But the fact that he is no longer uh, around means that the moderate forces uh, uh, the uh, people who seek to change slowly the nature of the Islamic government have lost a powerful voice. Talk to me a little bit about Rafsanjani's visit to China in 1985. You heard the foreign ministry office had some comments on his passing as well. The relationship between Iran and China, how did, how did it change as a result of his, his views, would you say? I don't think uh, the relationship between China and Iran will change. It is a deep a relationship, a very strong relationship. And Ayatollah Hashemi Rafsanjani admired China for its achievement, admired the Chinese Revolution, and always looked at China not only as a great economic partner, but uh, equally important. He looked at China uh, as a counterweight against the United States. That calculation has not changed, and therefore, I believe the passing of Ayatollah Rafsanjani will have no discernible impact on the good relationship between China and Iran. Can you talk to me uh, about what his death represents for the people who are taking to the streets? I know that a, a number of them are mourning his loss, but some are actually using it as an opportunity to, to voice dissent as well, aren't they? They absolutely do. Keep in mind that during the last uh, decade of Rafsanjani's long life, he became exceptionally uh, and openly critical of, of many policies of the Islamic Republic. And therefore, many reformists, uh, many Iranians who are unhappy with the status quo, took to the streets to express their grievance against the Islamic Republic. Uh, from what I understand, hundreds of thousands of people took part in these uh, funerals, and a few of them decided to express uh, their opposition against some aspects of the Islamic Republic and some policies by the Islamic Republic. Mr. Milani, thanks so much for your analysis. Appreciate it.